In a previous video, I illustrated how PCA could be used to verify that data such as these were in a state that we could sum the data without degrading the quality of the spectra. In this video, I'm going to look at a different data file. And this data file is similar in that it's measuring spectra from a, a vanadium foil. And the difference in this case is that between each of the XPS measurements, the surface is irradiated with helium ions of 1000 EV. The result, while it's not apparent initially because the data look very similar to the previous file, once the ions strike the surface, we end up with quite a change in the shape, particularly of the vanadium oxide. There's clearly a change in the oxygen peak. This is the oxygen 1S. And we can also see a significant change in the oxide. This is the vanadium 3 halves oxide peak. Not quite so obvious, but this is a, a small peak that might well be a metallic form of vanadium. And that doesn't appear to change. So there's lots of evidence in these data that we are seeing genuine chemistry alteration as a consequence of hitting the surface with these helium ions. The experiment that I looked at previously had data that were measured multiple times but all the spectra were essentially the same but for noise. And that's ideal if we want to test using PCA whether they are in fact identical because the result of PCA applied to such data would be one abstract factor that would contain signal and very little noise and then all the subsequent abstract factors would look like noise. This however is a data set in which the spectra are evolving and we will not find one abstract factor and the rest noise. In fact we will find multiple abstract factors and the multiple abstract factors will give us an indication of how many shapes are within these data. It won't tell us precisely how we would go about fitting these data but it will tell us how many different shapes that we need to identify before we can use those shapes to fit the data and hopefully interpret the data with some physical meaning. So to find out how many shapes are within these data we're going to apply principal component analysis, PCA. And when I apply PCA to these data and then display the abstract factors we can see that we have one that represents the majority of the signal in these data and then subsequent abstract factors are corrections to this first one and then corrections to the second one and so on that need to be applied if we're going to reproduce all of these spectra using a limited number of abstract factors. And this is the reproduction step where we're trying to eliminate noise. For each of these abstract factors that have signal, they must be included in that calculation. So here we have five and six abstract factors that look like we need to include six abstract factors to reproduce the data within the type of error that we would expect for Poisson statistics. And that's because the seventh abstract factor looks very much like noise. And so does the eighth and all subsequent abstract factors. They, these are all looking like noise. So we need to have six abstract factors if we just go ahead without thinking about what we're doing. Six shapes we might even consider these being six physically meaningful shapes, but that's not what I'm going to do now. What I'm going to do is try and understand why we have six abstract factors and see if I can reduce the number of abstract factors by eliminating part of the experiment. Oddly, I'm going to do this by a, a relatively low-tech solution, and that is I'm going to display the data overlaid and reset so we see the spectra and then make an observation and while we see lots of changes occurring in these data there is one change that looks to me slightly anomalous and that is out of the blue there's one spectrum that leaps up above the other spectra that are related to the oxygen 1s there may be something in here that I can't see too easily but for some reason the oxygen 1s is throwing out one spectrum is perhaps an outlier. So I'm going to hold the control key down and the shift key down at the same time, point at the spectrum and click. And what that did was it deselected 
from the list of selected VAMAS blocks. The VAMAS block that contains the data that we see here with the anomalous oxygen 1s. Let me display that data and there it is. So what does that look like relative to the two spectra in the sequence of etch cycles in this experiment? If I overlay these I can see from the colors that it's the red spectrum that is the one that it is the outlier and there really is something wrong about this spectrum that the oxygen 1s is higher the vanadium 2p one half peak looks about right but the vanadium 2p three halves peak certainly looks incorrect and then we return to the metallic peak and that looks correct so i can say that this measurement that i've just selected something went wrong here this error that we see here may be enough to add an abstract factor to our analysis of the vanadium oxygen spectra. So let me delete this line from the data file. And I'm going to the toolbar button that says delete VAMAS blocks. So the VAMAS blocks that I have selected I can remove from the file and in doing so I should have a set of spectra without the anomalous signal. And when I do PCA again and look at the abstract factors one two three four five and now the sixth one looks like noise so simply identifying the outlier in these data has managed to reduce the number of abstract factors by one so my search has now been reduced from looking for six shapes to five shapes and that's because there was something wrong with the data that I've now corrected in the sense that I've removed the spurious measurement.